Not long ago, there were times when Barcelona spent crazy money on the transfer market and had no problems with the registration of acquired footballers and FFP. For the past couple of years, the Catalans have had to deal with the great financial struggles which are still not allowing them to make high-profile transfers like they did with Griezmann, Dembélé and Coutinho, amounting over 100 million euros. Yet, the Catalans still somehow managed to rebuild the roster in a very intriguing direction. Hi there, friends! Today we are gonna talk about how Barcelona spent this summer and determine what prospects this team has in the race for various cups. Press the like button if you support Barcelona and write in the comments below from which city and country you're watching us. And while you're typing, we proceed to start. Let's get going! Barcelona have already played four La Liga fixtures, each of which turned out to be quite challenging for last year's champions. Following a tradition of some sort, Barca had a hard time in an away clash against Hetafe, suffering the first loss of points in a 0-0 draw. Then Xavi's words outplayed Cadiz with 2-0 on the scoreboard, and outshot Villarreal 4-3 in a roller coaster ride of a game. In their latest game, Barca withstanded Osasuna in a tough 1-2 display. However, it would be a huge mistake to draw any conclusions based on these matches' results. Apparently, due to encountering various squad problems, Xavi is in the process of building a new team. He does not reject the signature 4-3-3 formation, but he has to integrate new players into his system. It takes time. Nevertheless, we can already say for sure that a new, very bright and infinitely talented star will shine for Barcelona this season. 16-year-old Lamine Yamal was forced to replace the suspended Rafinha and gave a performance so strong, no one doubts his place in the starting lineup ever since. Ferran Torres also does wonders at the start of the 2023-24 campaign, having already netted half of the number of goals he scored in the entire last season. The former Man City forward has already scored twice, while he had four goals in the previous La Liga race. It would be probably more correct to start with the transfers out, since there were much more of them than the transfers in. Some of them were actually shocking. At the beginning of the summer, Barcelona suffered two very significant losses. Two legends, two captains, two leaders left the team at once, Sergio Busquets and Jordi Alba. Both decided to join Lionel Messi at Inter Miami. These are the cases when it's simply impossible to replace a footballer. One can find someone similar in terms of characteristics, perhaps even somewhat better and more modern-like, but none of these guys will immediately be able to give the quality what Alba and Busquets did. They were the last representatives of that great Barca that terrorized every European team. Such professionals made Barcelona into what it is now. Sadly, the time has come for them to leave, letting the club raise new leaders and legends. Barca needed to fix the FFP situation ASAP, so the club was very active in getting rid of performers who were not guaranteed minutes. That's why they calmly sold Nico Gonzalez to Porto for 8.4 million euros, and the wing forward Trincao went to Sporting for 7 million euros. Finally, Barca parted ways with Samuel Umtiti after terminating his contract. The Frenchman joined Lille as a free agent. Frank Isier, who moved to Barca for free, went to earn money in the Saudi Arabian Al Ali for 12.5 million euros. Barca failed to offload Clement Langlais, but still sent him on loan to Aston Villa, who most importantly took over the Frenchman's entire salary. Another player the Catalans found very difficult to get rid of and eventually sent on loan is Serginho Dest, monitored by PSV Eindhoven for quite a while. As for youngsters, Barca loaned out Shadi Riyad to Real Betis, Pablo Torre will gain experience at Girona, and Julian Araujo will play for Las Palmas. All aforementioned deals were thoroughly planned by Barca since the beginning of the summer, but what happened next in August had certainly shaken up the whole club. During the preseason tour, Xavi built the game around Usman Dembélé on the right flank of the attack though the Frenchman betrayed the club and went to play for PSG. Yes, 
Barca earned 50 million euros, but the footballer's agent will receive half of that sum. The last days of the transfer window were especially abnormal. After the pre-season tour, everyone thought that as Abde would be extremely useful for Barca this year and take on an important role in the lineup. But on August 31st, he joined Real Betis for 7.5 million euros. The Green and Whites had bought out 50% of the Moroccan's contract. No less shocking were the loans of Ansu Fati and Eri Garcia. The winger couldn't decide whether he wanted to play this season at Barca or not until the last moment. When it became clear that Fati wouldn't be in the project, the prospect decided to pursue his career in the Premier League, but not at Chelsea or Tottenham who were interested in his candidacy, but to humble Brighton Hove Albion. The key role was played by the head coach of the Seagulls, Roberto de Zerbi. Xavi was not going to lose Eric Garcia either, as the head coach said on September 2nd. Still, the Sancho back himself asked to let him go to Girona. This situation also took place in the last moments of the transfer window. In total, throughout the summertime, Barca received 105.5 million euros after initiating squad overhaul. This includes the 20 million forked out by Atletico Madrid for Antoine Griezmann. A pretty good result, isn't it? During the summer, we saw five new names recruited to Barcelona, on which the club spent only 3.4 million euros. Impressive savings indeed! These 3.4 million is the price paid for Barca's experienced pupil Oriol Romeo, who moved from Girona. According to his profile, he is invited specifically to fulfill Sergio Busquets' role in the team. Luckily, the 31-year-old midfielder is already doing his job well. One of the best transfers of the summer will definitely be Ilkay Gundogan's move to Barca on a free agent basis. An experienced, elite and still physically tough center half capable of making a difference in the midfield area. Players like him are as good as gold for absolutely any team. Experienced center back Inigo Martinez also joined the Spanish powerhouse from Athletic Bilbao for free. He is meant to improve the bench quality and impose competition on regulars. On the transfer deadline day, Barca not only released players, but also signed a bunch. At some point, the team got boosted by two Joao's, Cancelo and Felix. Cancelo comes to the most problematic right-back position and has all what it takes to become an incredible addition to the roster. Keep in mind that he can also be used on the left. The acquisition of Joao Felix raises most doubts. He showed great hopes but did not deliver both at Atletico and at Chelsea. Joao lacks physique, the ability to play out from the back and concentration. Nevertheless, playing for Barca is his dream, which will probably help him restart his career. That's exactly what we wish him to go through, as the guy has an incredible potential. Xavi is very pleased with the final day of the transfer window. Cancelo is a proven player who can play on both flanks. Due to the absence of Ansu and Abde, we lacked a reinforcement up front. Joao Felix has a lot of talent and has made an effort to come. I'm very happy with the situation. Everyone has done an extraordinary job to have a competitive team. Also, don't forget about the one signing which will certainly play its own big role in winter. Barca supporters shouldn't worry about Fati and Nabde's departures. The insanely talented Brazilian named Vitor Roque will be bought in January, able to perfectly cover any position in the attack. Blaugran paid Atletico Paranaense 40 million euros for his services. This season, this 18-year-old lad has already slotted 20 goals and delivered 8 assists in 41 appearances. Bombazo! In general, Xavi has a fairly balanced and strong squad at his disposal. Here's how the entire depth looks like on paper, taking into account the arrival of Vitor Roque in the winter. Goalkeepers – Ter Stegen and Peña Rightbacks – Cancelo, Roberto, Koundé, Araujo Centrebacks – Araujo, Christensen, Koundé, Inigo Martinez, Alonso Leftbacks – Balde, Alonso, Cancelo Defensive midfielders De Jong, Romeo, Roberto, Gundogan 
central midfielders Gunduan, Pedri, Gavi, Fermin Lopez, Sergio Roberto. Right wingers Rafinha, Yamal, Ferran Torres, and Felix. Left wingers Yamal, Felix, Rafinha, and Gavi. Center forwards Lewandowski, Felix, Ferran Torres, and Vitor Roque. Apart from mentioned names, we shouldn't forget about the always infinitely talented Catalan youngsters. These players are already training with the first team and will even be included in the lineup for the upcoming games. 16-year-old central back Kubarsi, 19-year-old central midfielder Mark Casado. Barca Athletic has potential first team debutants in its squad, like central back Mikhail Faye, who has already impressed Xavi with his skills and 20-year-old centre-back Mamadou Fall, who was loaned from Los Angeles FC, while midfielders Garrido, Paul Prim, Darvich and Bernal also stood out with their quality, as well as the new Messi Lucas Pacharaman in the attacking line. Turns out the list of possible stars does not end on Yamal. Barca's ideal lineup for the 2023-24 season looks as follows. Ter Stegen, Cancelo, Koundé, Araujo, Balde. Romeo, De Jong, Pedri, Yamal, Lewandowski, and Gavi, Gindewan, Christensen, Felix, Rafinha, Ferran Torres, Vitor Roque, and others will have important roles in the team. Real Madrid kick-started the season with four consecutive victories. Despite that, Los Blancos have a lot of squad problems and no nominal goal-scoring center forward. As you can see, both joints have enough problems to solve. The race for the league title will be extremely intense and Barcelona are quite capable of eventually conquering La Liga for the second time in a row. Likewise, the Catalans are the main favorites to succeed in the Spanish Cup. Moreover, we already know that Blaugrana will begin its Champions League journey in the same group as Porto, Shakhtar and Antwerp. And you know what? They are obliged to take the first place here and get an easier opponent in the round of 16. With that said, we predict this team to earn themselves a spot in the Champions League quarterfinals. From there, if Xavi's side gets in great shape, everything is possible. Barca have been massively bolstered and thus capable of surprising the whole European scene once again. Who knows? Maybe the Blaugrana will be the ones who ended up winning the treble. And that's all for today, folks. Don't forget to support us by subscribing and giving us a like. This is very important for us. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.